Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this Facebook Live event. Uh, my name is Justin Wingen. I'm with TM Television here in Carrollton, Texas, and uh, I deal with a lot of Avid products and Avid troubleshooting, and uh, today I get to bring you some kind of fun stuff. I get to bring you some tips and tricks, uh, and also some of the what's new in Media Composer's ver uh, latest version, which is 8.9.2. Uh, you know, over the last few years, Avid's releases have kind of given us some of much needed features as well as some nice surprises uh, and this release is no different so there's some really neat stuff uh, going on here. This session however I want to specifically talk about what's new in the realm of audio within Media Composer. Uh, as anyone who's ever edited can tell you that uh, even a rough cut needs an audio pass and any feature or tool or special trick that will help me make that part of the job more efficient and maybe a little bit quicker uh, I'm all for. So let's start with what I believe uh, the coolest and probably the best what's new in Media Composer 8.9 and I'm talking about audio slips. Let's take a look at it. Here I've got my Media Composer interface set up and I've got a clip of Shia LaBeouf clapping his hands. Anyway, let's say that this video and its audio are slightly off. It happens. Audio can be less than a frame out of sync, and before now, Media Composer has only let us adjust by frames or perfs. Well, now thanks to the Audio tab in the Source Settings window, I'm going to right-click on the clip and go to Source Settings, and that's going to bring up my Source Settings window. And within here, I have the opportunity to now adjust the audio left and right based on the sample. You can do that just by grabbing the audio, the bottom audio here, and dragging it left to right, or you can use the values here if you want to type in the number, if you know how much percent or amount of samples, uh, and you can slip left or right. If you want to reset all that, it's simple, just click on the preset and hit no slip and it resets it. And if, uh, also if you hit cancel it, it will uh, stop doing whatever you're doing. The top waveform serves as a reference. Also note that if you have multiple channels of audio, maybe on some you can't see waveform because there is no audio recorded there, you can actually choose the channel that you're viewing uh, in case you need to definitely see the waveform while you're doing that. Two things I've learned from playing with this. Number one, use an in or out mark or a marker in the source clip on a visual reference so that when you're in the source settings you can actually jump to that uh, using the alt left and right keys and I'll show you that when we get back into the source settings. Number two, toggle the source in your timeline using the toggle source record and timeline button down here at the bottom of the timeline to actually show the waveform in your timeline so you can almost in real time see what's happening when you make the adjustments. You'll see. Let's jump back into the source settings. You'll see down here if I hold the alt key and click the left and right arrows, it's jumping between the head, tail, and any markers or in and out marks I have in between. So now I've got a visual reference on maybe a clap that I want to line up the audio with. Now I can grab the waveform and drag it left to right, however much I think I need, and when I hit the apply button, I can actually see over here in my timeline, I saw the waveform move. So you can do it sort of in real time, you hit apply and see it move. So you can uh, get it really in line with, those, uh, with the visual frame that you're looking for. It's pretty cool. So let's edit that clip into a sequence now. I'm going to toggle back to my record window. And I'm going to edit that clip into the sequence. And lo and behold, there are effect icons on the actual audio tracks. And if I open my effect editor, I can see I have the effect right here, and I can adjust it after the fact, because it's adding it non-destructively, of course. Even better, you can drag that effect icon from the effect palette into a bin, as you can see I've already done and save that and now you have it as a preset that you can drag and drop onto audio clips later if you need to. Speaking of saving effects as presets, here's a fun little trick slash tip for you. Did you know that when you save effect presets into a bin, that bin shows up in the effect palette? Let's take a look. I've saved three different effects, not including the one I just added, into a bin called effects. I have audio slip and I have a dissolve and I have a resize. When I open the effect palette, check out what I see here at the bottom a section labeled effects, which is the name of the bin of course, I have to go to the audio clip tab to see my audio slip and my dissolve in there. So if I go to my filters tab and click on it, I only see the resize that's in here. 
If I go to my audio clip, now I see the audio effects that are in there. Makes sense. Want a bonus tip that sort of relates to this? Uh, I'm sure some of you will know this oldie but goodie. The quick transition bin, or rather, the quick transitions bin. And it has to be spelled exactly like this. So this is very similar to the thing we just saw with the effects bin and the effect palette. However, the quick transitions bin deals with specifically the quick transitions utility and media composer. So if I go into my clip and I decide to add a quick transition, if I have a quick transition in my quick transition bin, I'll drag that dissolve into my quick transition bin. And it's important that I save that as well. So now when I go back in to do a quick transition, in that drop down menu, I now have access to that quick transition that I saved into my quick transitions bin. Something interesting to note though, if you're going to do this, the effects bin has to be open in order for those effects to be visible uh, in the effect palette. You'll notice the quick transitions are as well uh, because it's just an effect. It doesn't matter what the bin is called for it to show up here. However, so if I close the effects bin, that goes away. However, the quick transition bin does not need to be open in order for that, that functionality to work. So if I go to add a quick transition, that option is still there. It's, it's recorded somewhere in the project metadata and it just knows that it's still there, which is pretty sweet. So you can load up a bin called quick transitions and it has to be spelled, capitalized, and spaced exactly like that. Quick transitions, uh, load it up with uh, your default, your favorite default uh, transitions and, and off you go. It makes it life a little bit easier. Plus, having fewer bins open is always a good thing. Uh, you want to you know, keep as many bins off your land as possible. Uh, speaking of real estate, another new feature in Media Composer 8.9 is the narrow view in the audio mixer. Ooh, let's take a look at this. So I'm going to open up the audio mixer. And you'll notice right now I've got eight tracks, uh, or rather six tracks and a master. Um, and the narrow a mixer view is really straightforward. First of all, you have to right click on one of the faders uh, and you'll get the option for set display options. And here is our option for narrow mixer. And basically what that does is it gives you room for probably 30 more or 30 percent more uh, faders on your screen, which is always great. Uh, it does sort of combine some of the meters and things, uh, which brings in onto uh, the same menu option. Uh, which legends to show in here, and, and it'll be by default uh, be dynamic legends, which means that as you're uh, playing back your stuff, it'll, uh, the legends will change when you're hovering over the, the uh, particular fader. Uh, so that's, that's the, uh, what's new in the audio mixer. Pretty, pretty simple, but kind of nice. It's, uh, it's all about saving you some space there on the desktop. Okay, last thing for this session, dealing with audio tips and tricks and what's new. This feature isn't exactly new, new, but it's relatively new. I'm talking about audio ducking. Yes, Avid gave us this lovely little gem a couple of releases ago and is a huge time saver. Basically, you tell audio ducking window which tracks your dialogue or VO are on, and then you tell which tracks your music is on. And then you tell it to do the work. So let me show you. First of all, I'm gonna turn on my waveform so I can see uh, what's happening in my timeline here. As you can see, I've got uh, music on A3 and A4, and I've got some VO on uh, A1. So I'll go ahead and play a little bit of this for you here. Testing, 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 this is a VO, this is a VO about the things I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm sure you get the point. We want to be able to lower the volume of the music when the VO is speaking. One thing I'll do is I'll spread out this audio uh, between the two VO tracks that I have. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go into audio ducking, and I'm going to tell the window which tracks contain my dialogue or my VO and which tracks contain my music. And I'm going to hit the duck button. And voila, in my timeline, you'll see I now have audio keyframes that duck the music down when the waveforms start on the VO tracks. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. This right, as you can see, it, it ducks the audio for a very long time. But I can adjust how often and how uh, quickly it adjusts between the waveforms. So when I go back into the audio ducking window, I can reduce the hold time, make the ramp time short, and I'm going to hit duck, and it's going to say, hey, these already have automation keyframes. Do you want to replace them? Of course I do. And you'll see now, because I 
gave it a different set of parameters. I said, don't wait so long to duck the audio after the VO stops. And so now it looks completely different. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. This is a VO. So now we get a much more uh, kind of sharper changes in the audio there. Uh, now, if I take my audio and spread it out, and go back into audio ducking, hit duck again, it's going to completely redo it for me. So there's really no, no uh, time wasted there. It's a fantastic little tool. That's about all the time I have for you right now, folks. I thank you for your time. I really uh, hope it was informative to you, and please join me in the future because I will be doing more of these sessions. I will go deeper into settings and troubleshooting and some other tips and tricks uh, that Media Composer has to offer. So thank you again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.